Our scripture this evening comes from Psalms 34 and 14. Turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Again, Father God, we are assembled here in your presence. We thank you for who you are, your character, your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you that, that you are God all by yourself. There is no power greater than you. You are Alpha and Omega. You will always be God. We thank you, Lord, for our lives today. You woke us early this morning, Lord God, and you have kept us safe throughout this day, Lord God. We know so much could have happened, Lord God, but you took care of us, Lord God, and we thank you. No, it's not because of our goodness, Lord, but it's because of you, Lord God. So many, Lord God, lost their lives today, Lord God. Some senselessly, some of them in accidents, Lord God, but you kept us safe, and we thank you. We love you, and we know that you love us, and we just thank you for constantly loving us day after day, 24-7, Lord God. We lift up the Bible study tonight, lift up Pastor Haynes and bless him and bless your word that will be taught. And we pray that we all will learn something new and fresh from your word tonight, Lord God. We lift up this church, Bethany Baptist Church, Lord God. We lift up the membership, the ministries, the ministry leaders, Lord God. Help us to grow spiritually, Lord God, to grow in your word and to do your will. us, bless our numbers to grow, Lord God, and bless our finances, and we lift up uh, this coming Sunday's worship service, Lord God. We thank you for blessing the past Sunday's worship service, but we ask you for an extraordinary service this Sunday, Lord God. We know you're able, Lord God. Bless the pastor and sermon on Sunday, Lord God. Bless the social ministers, bless the choir members and the musicians ushers and deacons and keep us safe in the place of worship, Lord God. We lift up our Sunday school ministry here in Bethany, all the teachers and students, Lord God, and help us to grow in your word, to teach your word, to understand your word, and most of all, to live in your word, Lord God. And I 
myself this tonight and lift up every church that's open in your name. Everyone you call to preach, to pastor, your missionaries, your evangelists, Lord God, and bless their ministries tonight, Lord God. Now we lift up the people who are sick, some mentally, some physically, some are disabled, Lord God. Asking for your healing touch, for your comfort tonight, Lord God. Bless the doctors, the nurses, the medicines, and cure takers, Lord God. And then we lift up uh, your children who are bereaved of loved ones. Comfort them as they go through this dark period in their lives, Lord God, and give them strength and guidance, Lord God. So we love you. Thank you for loving us, Lord God. And just help us, Lord, to leave here tonight with more knowledge than what we came in with. And then just keep your hands on us, guide us to our various destinations safe, Lord God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father God, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Thank you for having the breath that we have in our bodies, Father God. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for just your grace and your mercy. Yes. We thank you for your understanding. We thank you, Father, for your love, your protection that you have placed around us. Lord. Yes, Lord. We come to you today, Father, asking that we continue to have faith, Father, and yes. that we continue to just have that fire in us, Father God. Yes. We ask you, Father, that you would help us to see our purpose, Lord, yes. that our feet are grounded and rooted in your way, Lord. Yes. I ask you, Father, to help us become more and more servants of you, Father. Help us to be the light that you have called us to be. We ask you, Father, that you would keep us walking in your path, Lord. And even though we may stray away, Father, we know that you are right there to guide us back. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for just wrapping your arms around us and just whispering to us, Father, that you love us. Yes. We just thank you, Father, for just being our great Father and loving us unconditionally. Even though we do not deserve it, Father, you would know you never turn your back on us. And we're just grateful, Father. Tonight, Father, I ask you to cover our loved ones, cover the children that are back to school this year. I just ask you to cover Bethany as a whole. No matter what each and every one of us is going through, Father, I know that you'll make us make a way. But I just ask you, Father, that our ways align up with your purpose, Father. Yes. I ask you, Father, to open our hearts that we may receive. Help us to be a loving church, Father. Help yes. us to be more caring and, and, and more friendly, Father. Yes. Help us to tell the word, tell spread the word, Father, and tell somebody about your son Jesus. Yes. We thank you for the one that you have brought together. I know the young lady that came and she found us on Facebook, Father. And we just thank you for that, that, that attention, Father. We thank you for that, that message, Lord. Yes. We just ask this Sunday that you will have your servant deliver the word from you, Father, yes. and that it may minister to our lives. I ask you, Father, to keep us covered. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Dear Jesus, and we thank you for another day that was a promise to us. We thank you for letting us rise this morning and see another day. Not only did you let us rise and see another day, but we were we were able to get out of bed in our own right minds, yes. my Heavenly Father. We knew who we were and where we were, my Heavenly Father. We may have had some aches and pains, my Heavenly Father, but we were able to move. And we thank you for that. We thank you for our limbs, my Heavenly Father. We thank you for another opportunity to go into our uh, jobs, my Heavenly Father, or go wherever we needed to go today, and you kept a hedge of protection around us all day, my Heavenly Father, that we were able to come back into your house of worship again, my Heavenly Father. We just thank you for that. We thank you for never leaving us, my Heavenly Father, nor forsaking us. We just thank you for still being on the throne and still in control of this world, my Heavenly Father. Yes. My Heavenly Father, we're just asking right now that our will lines up with your will, my Heavenly Father. We just want to be the men and women of God that you would have us to be. We want to go the direction that you would have us to go, my Heavenly Father. We want people to see you through us, my yes, Heavenly Lord. Father. We want to be a walking testimony, my Heavenly Father. And as we hear a word tonight, my Heavenly Father, help it to be a foundation for us, my Heavenly Father. Help us to refocus ourselves, my Heavenly Father. Help us to remind us my Heavenly Father, uh, that you're still in control no matter what is going on outside of these walls, my Heavenly Father. It's all in your hands and all we have to do is look towards you, my Heavenly Father. 
We ask you to cover the youth, my Heavenly Father. As Sister McDonald said, as they're going back to school, my Heavenly Father, cover them. Give them that protection, my Heavenly Father. When they're away from home, my Heavenly Father, just cover them, my Heavenly Father. Give them strength in their minds and in their bodies, my Heavenly Father. Don't let them fall under peer pressure, my Heavenly Father. Just remind them that you are here, my Heavenly Father, and they can look towards you for guidance, my Heavenly Father. I ask you to look down on the Cole Brown family, my Heavenly Father, as she deal with the death of her son, my Heavenly Father. Give her strength, my Heavenly Father, as she deals with this, because he died under suspicious circumstances, my Heavenly Father. Give her clarity. Give her comfort, my Heavenly Father. Let her know that you still have her, my Heavenly Father. Touch her right now, my Heavenly Father. I ask you to touch Reverend Freeman, my Heavenly Father. Touch his body. Give him strength in his, in his body, my Heavenly Father. Touch his heart, my Heavenly Father. Remove that fluid from him, my Heavenly Father. I just ask you right now, you know what each and every one of us in this circle is in need of, my Heavenly Father. What's going on in our bodies, what's going on in our minds, what's going on in our household. Touch each and every one of us now, my Heavenly Father, and just give us clarity. That, so that we can discern your voice and know that it's done, my Heavenly Father. Whatever anxiety, whatever worries we're going through, that you have it and it's taken care of. And all we have to do is just leave it at the throne. I just thank you right now in your darling son's name. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you. Scripture says that this is the day that you make us to rejoice and be glad. We are definitely be glad that you woke us up. We all are going our separate ways and we're all here tonight to study your word, to strengthen our hearts and minds and lives and souls. Yeah. So dear Heavenly Father, we know that this is a crazy and confused mixed up world right now. So we look at you. We don't look to title gods, false prophets. We look to you. We know that you're real. We want you, God. You stand on your word. You bless us. You guided us through all kinds of times, uh, tribulations in our lives. But we thank you for watching over us, guiding us and protecting us. So dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you and give you all praise each and every day in our lives. For without you, we can do nothing. We thank you for the blessings that you bestow on us in our Heavenly Father's name. Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, thank you for looking us up this morning to see another day. Lord, thank you for letting me start a new chapter of school. Thank you for letting us be here tonight for Father's Day. And please let our chapter of school be great. Your back hurt. Like that. Where you been sitting? How you been sitting? Sitting wrong, sitting wrong sleeping wrong. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. You hungry, girl? You hungry or you just want your mama's? Huh? I was going to say I got some peanut butter crackers in the car. I can go too. <laughs> <laughs> so look in my cup holder and get some peanut butter crackers. You like my doorbell? Yeah. Got to do you like I, <laughs> I do you like I do Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like that TikTok. <laughs> 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 you live in? Yeah. You're tired. You observe it. 
girl. What you? Hmm? What you? You observe. <laughs> Where about you? Yeah. Someone says she worried about you. Really? Is she Friday night? Mm -hmm. Till this Friday? Yeah. That was a long prayer. It was about 20 seconds. Alright, 20 seconds more than it used to be. Growing, growing, growing. How's everybody doing tonight? Great. Right. 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 It's Chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. 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 Get tired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just say it. Okay, tired or concerned? I think it's okay. Luke. That's Zacharias, because that name Luke. is scary. Zacharias, Elizabeth. Luke. Luke, chapter 1. Luke, chapter 1, verse 5, study verse five. Okay. There were in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abiah, and his wife was the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord's ladies. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was buried, and they were both and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was, burned, was to burn incense when he went to the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answered, saying to him, I am Gabriel, that standeth the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to shew these, to shew thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. And the people waited for Zacharias and marvelled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, and they perceived that. He had seen a vision in the temple, for he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus had the Lord dealt with me in these days, wherein he looked on me to take away my reproach among men. And the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused is to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, out of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, 
hell thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thee among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of solution this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she had conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called Mary. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the solution of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence it is to me, the mother of my Lord shall come to me. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy, of thy solution sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doeth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, for henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from the generation to generation. He hath shewed me strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exhausted them, exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He had hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and returned to her own house. <clears throat> questions, questions, comments. Um. Who, who's telling this? Pardon? This is Luke's side of the story. Luke's side? You know what I'm trying to say. No, I don't. <laughs> Luke is the gospel writer. Right, okay. God is the author. I know y'all heard this a zillion times before. It's the last time I think we talk about but that. that. <laughs> But tonight I want to focus on humility. Humility. We're going to look at the absence of humility. And then we're going to look at the presence of humility. Remember when we started out, we talked about curiosity. <laughs> and that God had no problem with curiosity. We uh indicated that in Eden, the Garden of Eden, that God nurtured Adam's and Eve's curiosity, told them to uh, they could eat of any tree in the garden, all of different fruits, all of varieties, eat any one you want. You can uh, name all the animals, Name the trees, name everything. He nurtured their curiosity, but he set a limit. He said, but that's one tree. Can't eat up. Curiosity is all right as long as it has limits. So I indicated before, I don't know if there's anything wrong with that tree. Other than God told them not to eat. <laughs> you 
think that's why the Bible does not specifically tell us which kind of tree it was, because some of y'all still would be eating up. <laughs> the problem was he told them not to eat. Last time we talked about this matter of capacity. Capacity. Said that uh, one of the principles of creation is that God created capacity when he created the world. But with capacity also came emptiness. With the capacity also came need. But the same God that created the capacity, that created the need, he also created the fulfillment of that need. So as he created oceans that were empty, he also created fish to fill the oceans. He created the sky, air, but he also created birds to fly in the air. And he has this other principle, the same God that creates capacity, creates needs, also creates the fulfillment of that need, the meeting of that need, the satisfying of that need. Remember I said, that's all ministry is. Ministry is fulfilling need. That when we learn how to fulfill need, we learn what ministry is really all about. That's our job. Find a need and then meeting that need. Tonight we're looking at three characters, three main characters. Zacharias, his wife Elizabeth, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. So we see the absence of humility, and we see uh, the presence of humility. Starting off with Zacharias, we see the absence of humility. Do you really? I read this a bunch of times. It never hit me that of all the things that were exemplified was an absence of humility. Do you see it? <clears throat> Let's look at the facts. The Bible said that Zacharias was a priest. He was a direct descendant of Aaron. Anybody who was a direct descendant of Aaron was automatically named priest. Could have married somebody who was in the priestly bloodline, but he didn't just marry anybody. He married Elizabeth, who was also a direct descendant of Aaron. That means he he bona fide, purebred. He has the DNA for greatness. He could move to the top. He automatically had to be included in the functioning of the priesthood as it relates to serving in the temple. The Bible said he was blameless, without flaw. He uh, had done nothing that would disgrace his name. Homeboy was hitting the home run. Hmm. He only had one law, one strike against his name. What was that? That's all right. I didn't mean to shake you up like that. I'm sorry. I'm going to give that girl a heart attack. He didn't have an heir? He did not have a baby. He did not have a baby. He did not have a baby. 
Now, the absence of a baby don't not necessarily a strike against him. They blame for a little bit more than they blame. But the absence of the baby was the one thing that would suggest his life was not perfect. Now, all right, she so talked about the, that yeah, all right in the sense of the mistake he makes. The mistake he makes is he exemplifies doubt, disbelief about the fact that the angel tells him he's going to have a baby. Why do you think that's a negative? So what? It's supposed to be goodness and you know, all that faith and I'm trying to see I might be with my words. I gotta write stuff down. Gotta write down? But it's his caliber of a man of his position. A man his position. All of these pluses, yeah, that's what and all these accomplishments, all these titles, privilege and prestige. Oh boy, I got it all. But he expresses doubt. What's the problem? He's supposed to have faith more than anybody. Supposed to have faith more than anybody. Yeah. That seemed like some Sunday student judgment. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> Was he any different from what you would have been in the same situation? No. No. The big problem we have, Chastity, why we see a lack of faith, if you will. Is he doubts what God has said. Mm -hmm. He doubts what the angel is telling him. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all might get mad and say, well, Haynes, you're kind of being hard on the man. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why you're so rough on him, but the question I would ask, and that's why I'm looking at it, don't blame me. Why did the angel Strike him dumb. So what? Because of his faith. Because of his faith. He was questioning. A lack of faith. A lack of faith. He was questioning him about his age, and he was talking about how old he was. Yeah, that's his logic. Hmm? That was his logic. Okay. To show him a sign. So what? To show him the sign. To show him a sign. You know, you can't speak now, but when you do speak, you know that the faith. It appears the angel is displeased with his response. Mm -hmm. Why is the angel displeased with his response? Because he just called him a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angel of the Lord, and the Lord sent me in answer to your prayer. What you've been praying for, I'm going to give it to you. You're going to have a child, and his name going to be called John. And what was his response? <laughs> I'm too old. I'm too old. <laughs> How can this be? I'm an old man. You see a problem with that? Chastity, talk to me.
you can't question nobody because you sent from God to tell you not to. You can, because he did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, and that's the reason why. But he wasn't supposed to. Yeah, that's the reason why he made him do it. He's not supposed to, but he did. So, God had to show him. Well, why are you fucking dumb? <laughs> he do that to us too? Well, I did not know. I wish he did. <laughs> I wish some extract dumb now that they put it in. <laughs> I'm telling you what I'm going to do. You telling me what logic suggests. And since you talking crazy, I'm going to stop you from talking. I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm telling you how I'm going to work a miracle in your life. And why I'm telling you about my miraculous involvement in your life See, I'm lying. Mm. Was he logical? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is what he said made good sense? Mm. Yeah. Yo. Of a year. His wife is old. He's old. He ain't shoot blanks. He ain't shoot. <laughs> <laughs> and Elizabeth said, I'll stop being a target. And the angel says, Guess what? I'm going to strike you deaf. Mm -hmm. I'm not deaf. Dumb. Mm -hmm. Not going to be able to talk. Mm -hmm. What you think about that? Robin. When you read the, the scriptures, I was sitting here what you're saying. It says, when the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. So he got in that moment, moment, you know, yeah, he's got the tiles in position, but when the Lord come and spoke to him like that, he was startled, number one, and then he had fear. Okay, yeah. So, you okay, know, for that moment in time. Hold, hold your point. Oh, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. But now, wait a minute. He's scared because this ain't no everyday appearance. Mm -hmm. This angel that showed up. And it could have been he thought it was God. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this angel that showed to him in living color, in person, this ain't no ordinary occurrence. Mm -hmm. He's scared. Mm -hmm. He said he's scared. But the first thing the angel said was, don't be scared. Did he say fear not? Yes. Okay. But wait, 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 wait. That ain't my point. This is my point. I hear what you're saying. This is my point. It was suggested to me, Brother Benny, that this ain't no ordinary person talking. Right. So if this person here appears in such a divine appearance that he scared the living daylights out of me. Seemed like to me, when he start talking, I'm gonna listen. All I'm saying is, for that split second, second, for me, and I'm just talking about me. I understand. When you're scared, you figure the, yeah, you know, the, the like fear, fear justifies whatever happened after that. You know, it, it's the head of God's word. Because what we're really dealing with is how are you handling the word of God? I'm answering your prayer. But if you've been praying for it, what does that say about your prayers? Hmm. This is what you asked for. This is what you said you wanted. You the one who said you wanted a child. Now I'm telling you, I'm going to answer your prayer. 
at what point did you stop believing in the prayer that you was praying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Say you have not because you asked not. But this pastor said you asked for it. Yeah. But at some point, somewhere in between you asking for it and now you decided God ain't going to answer. Mm. When did that happen, Chastity? At what point? When I got too old? So I can believe in God as long as I expect him. But when I stop expecting him, I ain't got to believe in him no more. I can believe in the power of God as long as I expect it. But when I give up on his power, I don't have to believe in his power anymore. Yeah, that's the way people are. That's the way we are. I think the question, the question is, is it right? Sometimes we want when we want when we want, and it don't always come. So then the doubt sort of slithers in there, and then now, bam, your prayer gets answered. If you're not careful, you allow the devil to cause you to give up on you. If you're not careful, you will allow the devil to cause you to give up on you. The devil likes to put expiration dates. <laughs> oh, God's blessings. And God says, my blessings has no expiration date. Greatness has no expiration dates. Because your faith expires doesn't mean God's power expires. I was telling them today I wanted to use it in a sermon. I was supposed to use it, say it, but I, you know, we take great, great comfort in it. <coughs> we get braggadocious about it. God is good! And then y'all say, all the time. And the question that came to my mind, why do you say God is good all the time? And that God is great all the time. Bob said, great is thy faithfulness. He's greater than good. He's not just good. He's great. But the devil, he likes to get you caught up in cliches and in a comfort zone that really takes away from who God is. Is there anything too hard for God? But Chastity, how can you tell me there's nothing too hard for God, but you just told God, I'm too old. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, logically, it's all here. We got it. I trust in God. I'm going to depend on God. God is, I'm with him no matter what. I believe in God. Come hell the high water, I'm with the Lord. But I'm too old. Really? You see the way the, the enemy works? <coughs> see the way the enemy messes with you? The way the enemy tries to get you to disqualify your 
took his voice away. <laughs> the angel took his voice. And he doesn't get it back until they actually listen. What's the boy's name? And she said, John. They ain't never had nobody named John in their family. That's not part of their predicate. She's talking crazy. She's going through that period of hallucination. They go to Zacharias, what's his name? Give me a paper. <laughs> he writes John. And as soon as he writes John, mm -hmm. his voice comes back. Mm -hmm. Because when he writes John, he obeys what the angel told him. Mm -hmm. Tradition suggests that I name that child after my pedigree. Tradition suggests I name him Junior. I name him something. Not in my family. Uncle Joe. And now I'm going to obey what the angel told me to say. That's so me. And obedience kick in gets his voice back. Because now I'm talking the right talk. I got a question. So, nowhere in here did I see they discuss that. So what? Nowhere in there I don't remember them discussing it because he couldn't talk. Discussing what? The name. You don't remember the name? No, I'm saying she named him John. Then he couldn't talk and tell us what the angel told him. Did you read the part about the angel told him his name shall be John? Right, but he also went dumb right after that. So the wife, Elizabeth, said his name is John. What I'm, what I'm because, trying to say I, is, da, 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 da. Because he couldn't talk. That means he can't write it. Because he couldn't talk. That means he can't tell him about what he went through. Nobody was in there with him. They know when he came out, something happened. Yeah. He goes home, quiet, dumb. But he's better off dumb <laughs> than he was before he went in there. <laughs> if he'd been writing to tell them what the name was, don't you think he wrote something to tell his wife? I mean, you don't have to take my explanation is, my question to you would be, how she found out. I know that's where you're trying to go. But let's get real spiritual about it. Could the same God who told him could also tell her? That's what she really wanted me to say, brother. Because <laughs> she wanted me to say God talked to a woman too. <laughs> yeah, I can speculate. But that's not even an issue for me. She knows. She says. He knows. He says. What's up, Chastity? You got a big smile on your face. <laughs> Question. That was an indication of absence of humility, I said. Y'all see that? What's the difference between his question and Mary's question? <clears throat> the angel appears to Mary. Mm -hmm. Brother Bennett, the Bible says she was scared. The angel says you're going to have a baby. And she says, how can this be? Mm -hmm. Well, the angel didn't strike her dumb. 
This is just my this baby. <laughs> Don't laugh the walk. Jesus mama. <laughs> okay. Just by reading and listening tonight. This is <laughs> Zechariah had been asking for. Mary didn't ask for this. She was chosen for this. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Come <laughs> I on try, now. I'm trying, baby. Yeah. You want it? <laughs> <laughs> well, they all get, they get profound. <laughs> oh, two left shoes, but <laughs> it sounded good, didn't it? It sounded good. Come on. It sounds good. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, God chose Zacharias. Just like he chose Mary. I know he chose him, but, but, you, but, but you said he chose Mary. But I'm saying he chose him to be a testimony and an example, but he had been asking for that particular thing. He prayed for that. He prayed for that. Mary ain't prayed for no baby. Ain't prayed for no baby. Uh -uh. She was trying to get a husband first. She had a husband. She was like, <laughs> come on. Mary's question was asking how. Zachariah's question was contradicting God. Mary's question was asking, how you gonna do this? Zachariah's question saying you're lying. That you're not gonna be able to do it. Does that make a little bit more sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't mean to bust your bubble. Don't be trying to do that. It sounds good. It sounds good. <laughs> See, I talk about when I'm when I'm when I'm trying to get close to God, when I'm trying to communicate with God, one of the things I gotta do is make sure I'm in touch with God's word. And as long as I'm in God's word, I'm on pretty good ground. See, the fact of the matter is, like Brother Billy said, I, I really can't have all the answers. I really don't know when it's too late. I really don't know when my time is up. But what I can do while I'm in this twilight zone, while I'm in this zone, I'm not sure God has given up on me yet. I can talk to God with God talk. Mm -hmm. I can talk to God with God's word. Whenever you're in a question mark zone, whenever you at a point where you're not sure what God is doing in your life, that's why it's so good to stay in there. But you see, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You see, there's nothing too hard for God. Mm -hmm. You see, see, if I keep telling God what he said, <laughs> it's hard for God to contradict <laughs> what he said. You can't accuse me of talking crazy when I'm repeating what you told me to say. And when I start repeating what he told me to say, I'm saying what he said, so it means my head ought to be in a pretty good place. It's hard to contradict God repeating what God said. You say that I'm righteous. I didn't say that. You say that. You say that I'm forgiven. You said you love me. You said you sent your son to die for me. As long as I'm saying what he said, I'm in a pretty good place. Mm -hmm. 
But when I start telling him, he lied. Mm -hmm. Talk crazy. Maybe I need to shut up. Maybe I need to stop talking. But you trying to see what time it is? <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to show me she did more steps than me. <laughs> that was more important than what I was saying. <laughs> steps she did. Mary asked, How can this be? The angel says, I know you're a virgin. No, you never been with a man. But what's about to happen to you is going to happen because of God. Yeah, you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a seed, but the seed is not from man. It's from God. The seed is from God. Mm. Yeah, you're talking about miraculous. Yeah, you're talking about chosen. Yeah. The virgin. And now you're finna get pregnant. And by the way, you finna open up yourself for insult, degrading gossip, a lot of negative talk. <laughs> well, yeah, all good. You sure this is what you want? <laughs> One of the most beautiful orations you'll ever read is her oration My soul doth magnify the Lord. Mary says, I take it. I accept it. And remember, God never forces anything on you without giving you the right to say yay or nay. Because mm -hmm. yeah. mm. she could have said no. Say, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> Not only do I take it, I take it recognizing that I'm blessed. I'm on you. Because why didn't God go in a king's castle and get him a prince says to make prayer? Why didn't he get somebody of royal bloodline? I pick a little poor country girl. She not by no pedigree. She by no pure bread. Tell you who her daddy is, who her mama is. She selected because God selects her. <laughs> Her humility shines through. I'm not selected because I'm high priest. I'm not selected because I'm a royal bloodline. I'm not selected because I'm perfect. I'm selected because God has smiled on me. Y'all feel me? Y'all see the difference? Somebody was talking about it said uh, when when Josephus right about Mary meeting Elizabeth to Elizabeth six months pregnant the baby hadn't moved that's what Josephus said I wasn't there no record of the baby moving until Mary came in <laughs> and when Mary knocked at the door. John the Baptist jumped in his mama's bed mm -hmm. to affirm that he was in the presence mm -hmm. of the Son of God. Mm -hmm. John the Baptist had a role of Elijah, the forerunner. He, he was the one who was to run before the Messiah. I'm not the one. There's one coming after me. Greater, mightier than I. 
that bond was initiated right there at Stones. Y'all feel? Mm-hmm. Y'all see what I'm talking about? The difference humility can make. You know what I say? Humility is the dirt. Yep. Creates the environment for the seeds to grow. The, the virtues that come out of Galatians 5. Mm-hmm. Love, joy, peace. Can't have love have some humility. Can't have joy without some humility. Humility creates the kind of environment for God to nurture the virtues he wants us to have. But the more I nurture my humility, the more I nurture my godly nature. Y'all feel me? Question, comment. Yes, sir. So did uh, Elizabeth show any humility? <laughs> you got to admit, both of them show humility, Elizabeth and Zacharias. Because you not remember, the Immaculate Conception was only with Mary. Okay. What happened with John and Elizabeth? What miraculous. That happened when they came together. Right? Mm-hmm. So the fact that they, he's too old, but he wasn't too old that night. <laughs> <laughs> she too old, but she ain't too old that night. She could have come up with a whole lot of excuses why, you know they know how to say no. Okay. There's no way when she said no. Okay. <laughs> so one of the places I see humility is that the fact that she come together okay. yeah. in obedience to God. Now, I don't think it's such a sacrifice because she comes together. There's no way, no way that would indicate she. She hated it. Mm-hmm. She came together. She was glad to come together. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, any other forms of humility, I guess, would be injection, conjecture, I should say. Okay. They blame the woman for barrenness. The shame is on the woman. He could have divorced her, though. They could have said that. That was a grounds for divorce when your wife couldn't have a baby. He's the head. He's the man. God talks with him. God blesses him. He says, I've come to answer your prayers. But those prayers just hear the ears and you and the listen. Mm. Mm. Did she ever pray for a baby? Oh, I'm sure she did. <laughs> it doesn't say, but you must it say wait. That? Most women want one. Most women want a baby. That ain't what I heard. <laughs> Read that, that verse again where he says he answers the prayer. Start at verse 5. There was in the days of Hera, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia. And his wife with the daughters of Eric, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child, 
because that Elizabeth was buried, and they both were now stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in order of his course, according to the custom of priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zerachi saw him, Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son. Oh, that's thou praying. Thou prayer is heard. Questions, comments? Just like the devil worked. In their lives, he wants to work in your life. Don't allow the devil. It goes back to what we talked about before. If I'm going to be righteous, I have to think God thoughts. I got to think God thoughts. I need to come for me with God's word. Mm -hmm. The devil whispers something that is contrary to the word of God. We need to quickly jump on it. Snatch it out. And start thinking and talking. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Y'all got anything out of that? Yes. Yeah. Sick report. Uh, Sam Freeman, that play mama he was talking about. Uh, they said that she died. Announcements, sick report. Sister Betty's still in their stone. Uh, everything's still there. Okay. Did Reverend Freeman move? He had said something about oh, Reverend Freeman was changing hospital. Supposed to be discharged if everything goes well Friday. That's what the message Lynn said. Nothing goes wrong. Anything else? Let's stand for folks in prayer. Father God, we just come thanking you for another chance to come together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the examples, Zacharias and Mary. We see how they reacted to you and your word. We now come, Lord, asking that thou would help us to, number one, clearly discern your word and your will for our lives. Help us, Lord, to make the right choices. Help us, Lord, to say the right things. Help us, Lord, to never contradict you. Help us, Lord, to not give up on us. To not allow the devil to pause in our minds to think that there are expiration dates to the blessing, the blessings and promises that you have given us. Help us, Lord, to maintain our humility and be grateful for your choosing us even when we aren't worthy and we're not qualified. But because of your love and your grace and your mercy, we are all afforded blessings that 
but beyond our imagination. And so, Lord, we come asking of you to help us to be all that you called us to be. Help us, Lord, to stay in our lane because we recognize if we get out of our lane, we won't get to the right destination. And that would help us, Lord, to grow in you and to continue to proceed the way you would have us proceed that we can end up in the place that you want us to end up Amen. in. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for every person here. We thank you for all the potential that's in this room. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings in this room. And we ask that I would touch every person individually and touch us collectively. Bless our homes and help our homes to be homes of peace and prayer and love. We ask your choice blessings upon Bethany. And we pray that I would help Bethany to become the great church that you called her to be. Yes. We pray that I would help us to make the contributions that you intend for us to contribute, that we can do all we can yes. to be all we can, to make her to be all that she is. Yes. As we are mindful of Bethany, again, we are mindful of saints everywhere in every church that's open in your name. And so, Lord, we lift up everybody who stand in need of prayer. Encourage those who are this yeah. disheartened, those who are downtrodden, those who are ready to give up. Yes. Lift up their bowed down heads and inspire them to continue on in your name. Help us all to be walking manifestations of your word, your will, and your way as our prayer. We ask these and many, many other blessings in Magnificent, mighty, miraculous, marvelous, wonderful name of Jesus the Christ, your Son and our Savior. And all the saints said, Amen. Amen. Amen.